I think that's right. And I think it is a big deal just in terms of opening, further opening the markets to more people who want to access it. Obviously, the Bitcoin ETF went live in January and you saw 10 billion. I mean, it took, I think, two months to reach the same level. It took gold ETF to reach over like a year. So uh, the interest in this space remains very, very high. And I think the ETH ETF will do extremely well. Well, I think the first thing is they've lost a lot in court. And so, you know, they really got dragged kicking and screaming across the line to get the Bitcoin ETF live. And I think they realized that if they were going to drag their feet and fight around the ETH ETF, that likely the same outcome was going to happen. And I mean, it's frustrating that we have to go through the courts to get those positive outcomes. The United States should be investing in these technologies. We should be embracing these from a job creation, from a technical innovation. And unfortunately, this SEC has been fighting it you know, every step of the way. I think it's a hard argument for them to win. I mean, can they make life difficult? They've made life difficult for a lot of people, then they've lost in court. What I was talking about at the consensus conference last week in Austin was that people don't want just exposure to one commodity. So if you have exposure to gold, you might want exposure to silver. If you have exposure to other commodities. And so to me, it only makes sense. You don't want to have just a single threaded uh, asset exposure. So I think people also forget that it wasn't that long ago before the SEC got involved, that XRP was the second most valuable digital asset. And that was before the SEC kind of anointed ETH. Then they couldn't answer the question, is ETH a security or not? And now they've approved the ETF. They, they contradict each other. It's very diff contradict themselves. It's very difficult to follow. Correct. So XRP is a digital asset, not that dissimilar than Bitcoin or ETH. There's different characteristics of each asset. Bitcoin has really become digital gold and it has thrived because of that. ETH, there's a lot of excitement around the smart contracts capabilities. XRP is extremely fast on a per transaction basis and extremely inexpensive. People talk about gas fees and transaction costs of some other tokens. Ripple uses XRP as part of our technical stack to do cross-border payment flows. And, and you charge you charge whoever is moving the money Correct. What, 0. 0.00001 of XRP, which stands around 51 cents or something right now. Now, the main competitor in that space is SWIFT. That, of course, is the Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Transactions. That's the global one that a lot of people use. They charge much more, do they not? Yeah, they really are the dominant. I mean, SWIFT has been around for you know, 50, 60 years. And the frustrating part for all of us as users of SWIFT is that it really hasn't changed in 50 or 60 years. The architecture of how it works, it means it's slow, mm -hmm. it's expensive, and frankly, it's quite error prone. Uh, some studies have shown that about 6% of all SWIFT uh, attempts to wire a SWIFT uh, transaction end up in errors that bounce back and Oof. that it takes days to get it back. What about you guys? Well, the, an XRP transaction and a payment flow for us is really real time. It's instant, it's cross border. And the really powerful thing for a lot of our customers is they don't have to pre-fund accounts because our customers are financial institutions. And the way SWIFT works, you're pre-funding, you have dormant capital sitting in other banks around the world using XRP, using RippleNet, our payments network, you don't have to pre-fund. Yeah, it, I think this momentum is really driven from what's happening on a political basis. And it, the United States remains the largest economy in the world and it has been kind of backwards as its approach to cryptocurrencies. You know, countries like the UK are way ahead, Japan, Singapore, Switzerland. I mean, we are really behind the rest of the and world. And Ripple has offices in many of those cities. We do. We have uh, 14 offices around the world. And so for me, I think what's really driving the momentum right now is seeing that and you even said this earlier, that the voice of crypto, the voice of Ripple and is really gone up in the conversation in the United States. I think you're seeing shifts. Well, some of that is money. You yourself over the past two years have given a total of 50 million to Fair Shake, the lobby firm that cryptocurrency people are, are really kind of filling the coffers there. And suddenly you have Donald Trump saying, I'm the crypto president. You have Joe Biden making some noise about, you know, come on, lay off the regulations a little bit. You guys suddenly have a voice. You're, you're the kitten that roared in a way. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's less about the roaring, roaring kitten and more about, hey, you, you finally you're seeing some of the, politic the political machinery in the United States move and act. And look, we haven't yet seen the Biden administration. They, they've said some things, but they haven't followed this up with actions. You have seen Trump make this part of his campaign. I think it's incredibly smart and incredibly strategic. This is a topic that has a lot of passionate people. Mm -hmm. And this is yeah. an excitement and enthusiasm that are pro-innovation, pro these technologies, and know that they can be used in ways to protect consumers all at the same time. 
I think it's crazy that it ever became a partisan issue. But I think that the Republicans are being very strategic in how they're approaching that. And I think it's becoming an election issue, which I think is good for the industry. And thus, I think it's driving some momentum in the market. Brad? And we have Brad Garlinghouse actually plays the Hegelian dialectic. Speaking about SWIFT, and we know SWIFT has already updated their systems, also teaming up with Chainlink in order to get the all C and I. They're no longer old, slow, and clunky. They'll be able to know you better than you know yourself. And remember the crypto teacher told you. Let's get into the video. We're going to a different economy, and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go, but clearly... We're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're, going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers. In Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. And so we'll import Chinese-based CBDC technology. So it's going to be CBDC in a box. Uh, provided to you by the People's Bank of China. But every stock, every bond, every currency, every commodity, every piece of art, every private business, every piece of real estate will eventually be a token on a blockchain, an entry on a ledger, permanent and immutable. We will have truth instead of trust, and we will save over $7 trillion a year. Six to 8% of global GDP is wasted by the friction of the trust industry that's necessary when you have dual entry accounting with triple entry accounting which is what a blockchain is mm -hmm. we get rid of all of that friction it's a beautiful future like what you see in china and their social credit scoring systems right if we get identity wrong you know it could be a tool to enslave humanity and if we get it right it could be a tool to liberate humanity as an american you know uh, uh i'm obviously rooting for the the one that's on the side of freedom Bitcoin is an international asset. And also, I do believe the role of crypto is, um, it is, it, it, it's digitizing gold. I actually believe this technology is going to be very important. I am, I, you know, look at it. We have been part of the huge revolution in investing through ETFs. We believe that ETFs will be changing the whole way we invest. Many people still use it as a means, oh, people are investing it f for indexing. No, the majority of people who are putting money in an index, in an ETFs are active investors that are buying exposure. The entire bond market is being transformed as we talk right now. I believe the next generation for markets, the next generation for securities will be, will be tokenization of securities. Um, we will, and if we could have that distributed ledger that we know every beneficial owner, every beneficial s seller, we all have our, our, our code right. of who's buying, who's selling, instantaneous settlement. And think about it, it changes the whole ecosystem. The Chinese bank ICBC has been hit by a ransomware attack, and the U.S. Treasury market, as a result of that, um, has been disrupted. This, according to the Financial Times, we're going to get more right now with Bloomberg's Shanali Bassick. Shanali, what do we know? Uh, listen, we have the Financial Times now reporting that ICBC, one of China's largest banks here, was hit with a ransomware attack. And remember, they're a, a, a very significant intermediary in the Treasury market. The SIFMA has told his members that this has been part of the reason here uh, that the system is kind of clogged up, if you will, during that auction that we saw a little bit before. The attack had prevented ICBC, according to the Financial Times, from settling treasury trades on behalf of other market participants. A large executive at a major bank also telling the paper that such a large party on the fixed income clearing corp uh, creates major concerns, potentially impacting the liquidity of treasury markets. Now it was not just the poor auction. It was absolutely lousy, and, and uh, uh, you know, when, when the dealers have to step in to save a treasury auction, uh, that's a rare occurrence. I hate when 
countries go off the dollar. I would not allow countries to go off the dollar because when we lose that standard, that will be like uh, losing a revolutionary war. That will be that will be a hit to our country, just like losing a war. And we can't let that happen. And too many countries now are fighting to get off the dollar. Welcome, Welcome to the crypto, crypto teacher. teacher. And guys, please like and subscribe if you do like what you're listening to. Please inform your friends and family and spread all over social media. It is imperative that we get back to learning finances and understand how the world really works. Because once we understand how the world really works, we understand that it is all planned out. Now, I want to thank those who purchased the books, Crypto Teacher and the New Road Order Book. Remember, the New World Order book shows you how the world really works, and it is definitely time for you to wake up out of that sleep, especially in the times that we're in right now. And 2024 is going to be one of our most entertaining years. We have the presidential election. We have the drums of beating. We have the emerging markets going to be flipping the switch on the fourth industrial revolution. Now, we had the Fed signal rate cuts, but remember, guys, they haven't cut rates yet. So we know the massive magicians are about to set up that distraction. So therefore, they can cut rates while we still have inflation. And in the fourth quarter, once the election is over, we know the movie begins. And also, guys, I want to thank those who purchased the three kids books. It's time to re-educate. Also, much love to those who donate to the Cash Shop Patreon. Much love. Keep it coming. Guys, if you're not a part of the Patreon, make sure you're donating to the channel through the actual Cash App. But guys, this next Bitcoin and crypto bull run is going to be a utility run. So you want to make sure you have the cryptos that have real utility. And much love to those who are shopping at both stores. Keep it coming. And of course, guys, we get into Bitcoin and cryptos first. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And we have Bitcoin, cryptos, and stocks up right now. And guys, don't forget in crypto, we pump at the same time every month. Make sure you're taking advantage. And then also make sure you're joining the Patreons. Like, subscribe to this channel, and spread it everywhere. But guys, do not forget to pay attention to the actual indicators. We have yield rates which we know should be skyrocketing, just happen to just keep moving down. And of course, that's great for assets. We have the dollar up. We have volume and crypto up. We have Tether and USDC. And we have Tether invest $18 million in XREX to facilitate cross-border payments in emerging markets. And guys, we know the emerging markets are going to rise in its fourth industrial revolution. And this is a Taiwan headquarter company. And I don't care what country you go to, they all have a plan for this new digital economy. And remember, the crypto teacher told you. And then, guys, of course, we have the Fed. Repo at $377 billion. Make sure you're pulling that on a daily basis. And don't forget, they have two safety blankets already set up. Now, we have Canada cut 25 basis points. And they're not at that 2% inflation. We'll see what the ECB does. And we know the Fed is going to be last to cut. But we know we're definitely going to get cuts. But the fact is, it's too late. The damage has already been done. Now, we had Gary Gensler on CNBC. And I'll be bringing you a second video on that. But we know Gary Gensler is not going to change his tone. The reason why is because his job was to stall us out. So the emerging markets could rise. And he only has a few months and he can ride off in the sun with a big check. And remember the crypto teacher told you. Now we have the spot Bitcoin ETFs, BlackRock, Fidelity, and Grayscale all up. Now getting over into a little crypto news. We have BitMEX offers 200x leverage for Ethereum perpetual contracts ahead of anticipated U.S. spot ETFs. And the gambling casino just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And we have BNB token breaks through 700, sets an all-time high. And I remember when BNB was below $80. And I told you BNB would just keep climbing. 
because it's there for a reason. Getting discounts on fees is your utility. It should not be at a $100 billion market cap. And remember the crypto teacher told you. Now we have MoonPay lays off 10% of staff and we see they keep coming. I don't care what corporation it is. Now we have Coinbase launch a smart wallet with hopes of addressing crypto pain points. And remember guys, whoever makes this seamless is going to be the winner. They do not want critical thinkers. They just want them to be able to tap and keep it moving. They stay in control for you not understanding the system. And remember the crypto teacher told you. And lastly, we have BlackRock and Citadel Securities back TXSE group to launch Texas Market Exchange. And a lot of that has to do with taxes. And then also, guys, we're moving over to tokenization. And of course, they want to bend the rules. And we know the banks are the biggest what? I'll let you finish that. And remember the crypto teacher told you. Because he knows when it comes to the NWO. It's all planned out. But that's all I have for you. Don't forget about the books. Crypto teacher and the new world order book. Plus the three kids books. It's time to re-educate. Also, new to cryptos, Coinbase, Bitchu, Binance. Do not forget book links and crypto links are in the description. The stock channel, guys. Don't forget to go like, subscribe, spread everywhere. You have your Kobo, your chip size, your banking, your gaming. While everybody's sitting at home, get on stocks. The see where the biotech stocks. And while everybody's at home wishing, they were still getting that free money. What are they doing? Drinking and smoking weed. Don't forget about those stocks and you have a wonderful day. Most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come. Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers. And that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids' books. You know, I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate, not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis. Whether it's your job, whether it's in your community, we have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share, but this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figure. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends. So therefore, we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. Part 1, King Joshua and Grandma Tim. Save the village. Part 2, King Joshua and Grandma Tim. Save New York. Long COVID-33. Part 3, King Joshua and Grandma Tim. Goes to China. It's mandatory to get Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3 of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.